Hello and welcome to this free preview lecture series of my on-demand AP Electrical and Computer Exam Preparation course. In this video, we are going to learn about matrix operation, which is lecture number two of a multi-part lecture series on matrices. Before we dive into the content, I would really appreciate if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Hello and welcome to part two of our multi-part lecture series on the topic of matrix, which is a subsection of mathematics. In this lecture, we are going to learn about matrix operations, namely addition, subtraction, multiplication, and transpose of a matrix. Our next topic of discussion is matrix operations. We will start with addition and subtraction. Matrices can be added or subtracted only if they have same dimensions. So over here, we have a two by two matrix. It can be added or subtracted to this matrix, the second matrix, I'm gonna call it as B. Okay, A and B can be added and subtracted together because their dimensions are the same. Over here, we have a three by three matrix. It can only be added or subtracted to another three by three matrix. Again, A and B over here, so they can be added or subtracted. But we cannot add a three by three matrix to a two by two matrix and so on and so forth. So the dimensions have to be exactly the same for addition and subtraction to take place. And you will also be able to do matrix addition and matrix subtraction and similarly multiplication by means of calculator. I've prepared a very short video where you can actually, a lecture video where you can go through matrix addition, subtraction, and multiplication. So you can check it out out to this lecture. But it is important to know how to do matrix addition and matrix subtraction and multiplication by hand as well. Multiplication. Matrices can be multiplied if the number of columns of the first matrix is the same as the number of rows of the second matrix. So let's say the dimension of the first matrix is m by n. So m rows and n columns. So if you're multiplying matrix A with matrix B, we have to make sure that the number of rows in matrix B is equal to the number of columns of matrix A. So that's why I've written it like this. Addition and subtraction require same dimensions, but multiplication can be performed even if dimensions are not same. So you don't necessarily have to have a two by two and another two by two matrix in order to perform multiplication. You can do a multiplication between a two by two and a two by four matrix. Okay, as long as the number of columns of the first matrix are equal to the number of rows of the second matrix. Another important matrix operation is transpose. Transpose of a matrix is calculated by changing its rows with columns. And again, once we go through practice problems, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and transpose, all of these operations will make a lot more sense. And you can also do most of these operations by using the calculator. But I emphasize knowing the basics, being able to do it by hand using the first principles, because that way you can sort of cross check your work and calculator can further validate your answers. Let us now go through some practice problems on the topic of matrix operations. Over here, we are given two matrices A and B, and we are being asked as to which operations cannot be performed with A and B. In order to answer this question, we need to determine the dimensions of both of these matrices. So we can see right away that matrix A has three rows and three columns, so it's a three by three matrix, whereas matrix B has three rows and two columns, so it is a three by two matrix. As we just learned, in order to perform matrix addition and subtraction, both matrices shall have same dimensions. As you can see over here, matrix A has a three by three dimension and matrix B has a three by two dimension. So addition and subtraction are not possible. What about multiplication? A cross B is possible because the number of columns in A are equal to the number of rows in B. So I'm just going to write the dimensions of A over here, three by three and dimensions of B as three by two. So you can see that the number of columns in A is equal to the number of rows in B. So this is possible. A cross B is possible. But what about B cross A? Again, if you're doing B cross A, then it is three by two 
and 3 by 3. So you can see that these two are not equal to each other. So B cross A is not possible because the number of columns in B are not equal to the number of rows in A. So this is not possible. The only operation that's possible for these two matrices is A cross B. The next problem is asking us to determine the sum of two matrices A and B, which are given over here, matrix A and matrix B. We can calculate the sum of matrices A and B because both matrices have same dimensions. So when we are doing A plus B, we are going to add the respective elements of A and B together. So this is the first entry of the first column for A and first entry of the first column for B. So these two are going to be added. Similarly, second entry of the first row and second entry of the first row of B. A and B are going to be added. Similarly, six is the third entry of the first row and three is the third entry of the first row for B. So these two are going to be added and so on and so forth. It's simple summation and you will end up with this matrix which represents the sum of A and B. So A plus B, you can notice over here, the resulting matrix A plus B has the same dimension as A and B. And that is always the case with addition and subtraction. Problem number five is asking us to determine the transpose of the two given matrices. Finding the transpose of a matrix is a pretty simple and straightforward operation. You basically switch the columns to the rows and rows to the columns, okay? So let's focus on matrix A. So I have the first column as 281. I'm going to write this 281 as a row, 281. Now the second one is 4, 10, and 3. I'm going to write this column 4, 10, and 3 as a row, 4, 10, and 3. And the last column is 6, 12, and 5. I'm going to write it as a row, 6, 12, and 5. So this is A transpose. Similarly for B, what I'm going to do, I will take the first column and 1, 3, and 5 and convert it into a row, 1, 3, and 5. And the second column, 2, 4, and 6, and it will be written as a row and this is B transpose. So convert the three rows into three columns for A. Dimensions of the transpose matrix are also three by three, as same as the original one, because it's a square matrix. But when you look at the dimensions of matrix B, the original matrix has a three by two dimension, but the transpose matrix has two by three dimensions because we've converted the columns into rows and rows into column because it's a non-square matrix. Problem number six is asking us to determine the product of matrix A with identity matrix. So we are given matrix A and we need to calculate A cross I. Identity matrix for a three by three matrix as we saw earlier would basically be a square matrix with entries of one along its diagonal and all the off diagonal entries are equal to zero. So we need to calculate A cross I which is the product of A and I. And in order to do multiplication, what we basically do is that we write the matrix, and this is the trick that I would recommend you consider using if you're doing it by hand. We basically write this matrix three times, right? So I'm going to write 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 1, 3, 5, three times. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 1, 3, 5, and 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 1, 3, 5. After that, you're going to take individual columns from the second matrix and write them on top of each of these matrices, okay, that we've written. So the first column is 1, 0, 0, the second column is 0, 1, 0, and the third column is 0, 0, 1. And now what we're going to do is we are going to multiply 1 with 2 and 8 and 1. So 2 times 1, 8 times 1, 1 times 1, and we are going to add it with 0 times 4, 0 times 10, and 0 times 3. So you have 4 times 0, 10 times 0, 3 times 0, another plus, and 0, 6, 12, and 5. So 6 times 0, 12 times 0, and 5 times 0. And this will become the first row of the product matrix, okay? And you're going to go through the same process for the second matrix that you have written, and that will basically be 2 times 0, 8 times 0, and 1 times 0, plus 4 times 1, 10 times 1, and 3 times 1. 
okay and then for the last one it is 6 times 0 12 times 0 and 5 times 0 so 6 times 0 12 times 0 and 5 times 0 and you add all of these up and you will basically get another column and then for the final one you have 2 times 0 8 times 0 and 1 times 0 and again you go through this process and you're going to end up with this and in the final step you're going to calculate the summation so we have 2 times 1 plus 4 times 0 plus 6 times 0 essentially it is just 2 and in this case it is only 8 1 4 10 3 6 12 and 5 okay by calculating all of these summations and now when you take a step back and take a look at it you basically find that this resultant or the product is the same as the original matrix and that's the beauty of the identity matrix when you multiply identity matrix with a given matrix it will always result in the same matrix and then the catch is that identity matrix only exists for square matrices that is the matrices that are two by two three by three four by four in general n by n problem number seven is also asking us to determine a product in this case we are given two matrices a and b so the product of A and B, A cross B is possible because the number of columns in A, which is 3, is equal to the number of rows in B, which is also 3. And in order to calculate the product, we are going to go through the same process and we will end up with only two columns for the resultant because there are only two columns in the second matrix. So I am going to write 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, one three five two times okay that's because i only have two columns in matrix b so two four six eight ten twelve and one three five and for the first set i'm going to write the first column okay as a row on top one three five and for the second set i'm going to write two four six two four six and when you look at the multiplication and sorry the summation that's going on over here so i have 2 being multiplied by 1, 8 being multiplied by 1, and 1 being multiplied by 1, plus 4 multiplied by 3, 10 multiplied by 3, and 3 multiplied by 3. And that will be added to 5 multi 6 multiplied by 5, 12 multiplied by 5, and 5 multiplied by 5. So that will basically become the first column, and same process for the second one. You will basically then have to simply calculate those summations and you will end up with the product of A cross B as 44. So this 44 corresponds to this summation, 98 corresponds to this summation, and 35 corresponds to this summation. Whereas for the second column, 56 corresponds to this summation, 128 corresponds to this summation, and 44 corresponds to this summation. A cross B has the same dimensions as B. Okay, it's important to know this because A had a dimension of three by three, B had a dimension of three by two, and you can see that the resultant A cross B is also three by two. Problem number eight is asking us to determine the square of the given matrix. Square of the matrix can be determined by multiplying the matrix by itself. And essentially you have to treat both of these matrices as two separate matrices, although you know they are both the same and then go through the multiplication process that we've been going through and you will be able to come up with the square of the matrix essentially write the first matrix three times and then put the columns on top of each of the matrix and then calculate the summation um, add the sums and essentially you will end up with the square of the matrix it's the same process as calculating a cross b or a cross i or any other multiplication Problem number nine is asking us to determine two times A for the given matrix. Whenever you have a scalar being multiplied by the matrix, you simply have to multiply that particular number or the scalar with every single entry. And that will give you the product of that matrix with that scalar number. In this lecture, we learned about matrix operations, namely addition, subtraction, multiplication, and transpose and we did a bunch of practice problems in order to fully comprehend these concepts. If you found this preview lecture helpful, 
I am confident that you will also greatly benefit from the full course that contains over 150 lectures and covers all the topics that are found in the latest NCS F Electrical and Computer Exam Specification. You will also get access to tons of quizzes and mini exams in this course that will help you get additional practice along with a bonus full length computer simulated practice exam. This streamlined and well reviewed course comes with an amazing 30 day full refund policy, no questions asked. On top of all this, I have also included a special discount link in the text section of this video.